place along the way, so then to start. I'm Luisa Castro. I am a partner at a law firm based here in Lisbon, and I'm also an expert on Web3. I'm the head of the Web3 and corporate department, and I have been working with Web3 related issues for at least six, seven years now. So, for a while, and yeah, I'll start. So, the first case I'm going to bring is Daper Labs case. And this got very famous in the US because they had an app called NBA Top Shots. And the big discussion was, was that a security did not need to be regulated. And actually one of their users sued them. So they got a lawsuit, it was not from the SEC, it was actually from one of the users. And those users were alleging that NBA Top Shots, specifically the moment NFT, was security. What does that entitle us to? So, what are moments to start off? Moments are pretty much a digital baseball card of some sorts. This is the closest that we can picture it. So they're digital short videos of an NBA shot. And they also have the statues of that player on those digital cards per se. So it's very much close to collectibles. And in the case specifically, it was very compared to, funny enough, Pokemon cards and even baseball cards due to the nature of it. And then the other part was pretty much defending, no, they are securities. And then they started, I mean, how we test is a big thing in the US. And then why are we bringing to this, especially here in Europe? The US still sets a lot of precedents and all of the big cases end up coming from there. And the EU regulation still, other than Latin America as well, they tend to follow whatever US regulations and whatever the SEC tends to follow. How it test is a big example of that. It's not applicable per se in European Union, but the standards here in European Union are very, very similar to the ones in how it test. So in the end, like what the hell is how it test? It's pretty much the four criteria that the SEC use to define if something would be considered a security or not. The four criteria is, is there a common enterprise? Is there expectation of profit? Is there uh, a third party putting the effort onto it? And well, there was money investment on it or not. For it to be a security, you have to meet those four criteria. So on the moments case that is still ongoing it's not really it doesn't really meet those four criteria and that's a problem for the whole web tree system because we have to think that how it tests was not only created in a common law system but was also created for traditional markets so this was created in the context of financing and banking not really for web tree not really for arts not really for collectibles if anything so the courts in the US have been trying to create uh, a new precedent, so pretty much update how it ties to our reality, to the Web3 reality and NFT reality. Not very successful, most Web3 companies are not, most of them purposely, late, letting the cases hit court to not create a precedent. If there is no precedent, they still have to apply whatever old cases they have. So have been a bit of a battle in this sense. And how does this apply to Europe? Europe follow how it does. I mean, we have been hearing now about Mika for so long. We, saw, we thought Mika was going to solve most, if not all, of our problems. And that Mika, for example, it doesn't regulate securities. They, change, they pass through another legislation, the MSAI2. They say, OK, if it's security, if it's something related to investment of money, it's not in Mika. Mika is really, will be really good to setting uh, parameters, to setting uh, pretty much categorizing, putting what is what, what is an utility, what is a token, so to naming things, that will be very good. But all in all, for what's more critical right now in the moment, they don't really regulate it. So uh, for the first case, for the Dapper Labs case, for example, the moment, uh, most of the community, at least the legal community, they're not deeming them as being securities. We are, most of us are considering being collectibles. If we're going to start to deem any and all NFTs that end up being collectibles as security just because the prices can go up and down and you can actually profit from it, we're going to start to have a hell of a nightmare in our hands and then everything is going to be regulated, which is not what anyone in this space wants, like an extra regulation when it's not needed. So uh, it's still being discussed, but this is how the community is a bit feeling about it. 
And then the second case that I'm, I was going to bring is more related to music industry. So you, we have been having more and more albums and musics being released as NFTs. What's the good part of that? We start gapping bridges between the artists and the public. We start also creating new uh, revenue streams. We start uh, to enter areas that we were not entering before. And then we have two really good examples that were pretty, both of them were really successful once they were launched. It was the Kings of Liam. They released an album as an NFT, which was very, very much successful. But their album uh, was not at the time considered uh, an investment because they were selling pretty much the album for a token. They were not really fractionalizing their album. So you would not get part of the royalties of the sale just because you have an NFT of an album, which is the tokenization of the music is a whole new world and generates a whole new problem. But it was a great success. And on top of that, what they did with their NFTs was they started linking the album to experiences. Those experiences could be watching a, a digital concert, so VR kind of thing. They also set like some vinyl discs that you would also tag along with that, it's like some limited edition. So depending on the type of NFT that you bought, you could get a different experience out of it. And then we had Grimes. Grimes actually, uh, she released a song as an NFT which sold uh, worth like the whole album and a matter of minutes was like six million on revenue and dollars. And what's this case was so important because if I'm not mistaken, it was in like 2021 or, or something like that, it was really important for the NFT community because of market fit. She was the first one to actually get that much attention and that much revenue so fast with an F NFT in the music industry because so far everyone was a bit skeptical like is going to have a market fit, is people are actually going to enter this, buy this, spend money on this time, especially because it's a project, so it was really good. It shows that there is market fit and that all in all, there was not so many cons as pros, so it was actually really worth it. And then we have some possible issues with that. Most of the possible issues with the NFT music, they end up revolving royalties, which it's not actually a new problem. This is the problem that have been in the music industry for years and years. It's one of the problems that the streaming platforms that we have now try to solve once they so to kind of end up piracy and also to pay fair royalties to the artists and all of that. But then when we think about having the artists have contact directly with the public and you don't have the middleman anymore, which is one of the pros, you also end up with a royalty problem in your hands. Like who is going to collect the royalties? Who is going to actually pay the artist? Is the artist itself going to do that? He's going to have to hire a team to do so. And then if the person that bought the NFT resells the NFT, does the artist gain a royalty from that? Or is it all profit of the person because they already paid the NFT? So you start entering a new rounds of questions that were not really thought before because we didn't have this problem. And that's the good and the bad thing about the legal side of it. We start regulating once the problems start appearing. And those were problems that in the stream media we were not having so far, at least not in those exact questions. So there was not really a point to regulate or I even ask them if there was no problem with that. But then we start having regulations and then not specifically for NFTs and royalties, but we start having other regulations. And the problem with that is in the web tree, people, we pass to the whole ecosystem, and I'm, I'm being in this system long enough to see that we pass from people freaking out once they hear regulation, and they were like, I prefer to be in the Wild West than trying to be regulated at all. And then we are now passing to the time that people are like, okay, I want to operate, I want to be regulated. And in between those, we still have people, I mean, I still have clients that come to me like, I don't really care about regulation, which is really bad for you to say to your lawyer that you're trying to hire, but they're like, I don't really care about regulation. I just don't want you to be arrested. This is still a, a big one. It's, it gets me kind of scared, but also at least give me some comfort that they're at least coming to a lawyer like, okay, you're at least not trying to go around all of the system. 
but yeah, that's on this. And then we arrive at audios. Audios is what people are calling the Web3, the new Spotify, and they are a decentralized platform on which artists can put their, their work and interact directly with the public. Uh, so it's a decentralized technology. But for me, that's not, it's not the most interesting part about audios. The most interesting part for me about audios is the AI music distribution. So we now with ChatGPT and all the AIs, we are starting to have some problems that people enter online, they create the music with the AI, and you not necessarily give credits to the artists that had the melody, the lyrics, or even that style before, you're just using the AI. And not all AIs will credit that, or sometimes not even you that are putting the prompt on that AI will know that you're actually somewhat plagiarizing. And that's already a problem in the normal music industry. Without talking about AI, we have loads and loads of plagiarism processes going on every day. So what happened to this AI on audios? Once you're an artist in their platform and you put your work there, they feed their AI platform with that. So whenever someone entered the AI parts should try to create a music from there, it already gives credit directly to the artist. So if the artist is already in the platform, they will be credited. It doesn't matter if it's one, two, or 10 artists that were used for that specific prompt, they will all be given credit. And that will, most likely, uh, reduce a lot on the lawsuits, especially on plagiar plagiarism. Uh, the consequences is not only having a more collaborative and transparent system, but also having the credits being due and the royalties being paid and all of this. Um, yeah, so I was going to enter on an NFT landing, but I don't think we'll have much time for that. But I think we still have a couple of minutes, so if anyone have any questions, I can answer them now. If not, I'll be around for anyone that wants to ask. So if anyone have any questions. No? Okay. Well, thank you guys, and that will be all.